Hi people, Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here, and today I'm going to show you how to install some EMG solderless pickups into your guitar. Great, so thanks for tuning in. I've got here a Les Paul standard type of guitar. It's actually a Honan Professional Series L60. And what my client has asked is for me to install two pickups in it. Here they are, they're from EMG. They use a solderless system, but actually on a guitar like this, there is a tiny amount of soldering needed. And I'll show you that as we go through. But what I've got here are two different pickups, the P81 and the P85. And you can see that they're actually soap bar type pickups, or what we might call P90s. I made a video about that type of pickup if you want to know more. So today I'm going to start by showing you this. In this box is one pickup and a wiring kit. And that wiring kit has everything you need to wire this one pickup into a guitar. And I'm going to show you how that works. Then once that's done, I'm going to open the other box, which means we're going to have two pickups and two wiring kits. And to wire up in this style, you need both pickups, but you don't need the complete set of both wiring kits. You need a bit from each of them. It's really straightforward, and there are other ways to wire two pickups together as well. Let's cover that in the video. So we've got our two pickups here, the P85, which is our neck, and P81, which is our um, bridge one. What I'm gonna do is just open one box for now. Essentially, they're both the same inside, except the pickup spec is different, but all the components will be the same. So let's just unseal this. So here we have the wiring diagrams and instructions. Um, I'll go, I won't go through that in details, but it's got the list of components in it. I'm going to show you how to wire it up, so we don't necessarily need that right now. And then the pickup in a foam surround. Perfect. Let's take that out. I'm going to keep it in this. Well, you can see at the back magnet the screws are there and also there's a little cover here for the hookup connectors so let's keep that covered let's put that just to the side for the moment then we have our component bag and as we expect with most guitar companies a sticker so we've got the bus here which has got the in and out pickups and for the battery as well it's set up for two pickups so we've got the bridge neck in and out so this is fine for using with one pickup and it's also absolutely fine for using with two pickups so therefore if you bought a double pack like we have here two different pickups you only need to use one of the bus controllers in it you don't need the um to use both of them oh this is good it comes with a heat shrink here so heat shrink can wrap around the wires and you can use it to hold any connections in place. That would be useful if you're cutting a wire or if, for example, you're using a, a pickup that's not part of this set. Here's our battery connect cake connector um, and then some other connectors to connect the different pots together. Another heat shrink, so they're labelled, so we've got an live and ground are hot and ground all the cables we need a little bag with the washers in for the pots here is our input jack it's a stereo jack which means it acts as a switch so normally you only have a mono output on a guitar but because this is stereo it can register when the guitar lead goes in and therefore that when it goes in we can use the stereo part that we're not using as a switch so when the jack goes in it switches on when it comes out it switches off because there's no connection between that secondary stereo part and then here we've got the pots with the connectors underneath everything's labeled this one's the volume and here's our passive tone just going to interrupt for a moment there to say if you are enjoying this video and finding it a useful guide as in fact you might have found with my other videos please do consider tipping me a tea I'm not sponsored by anyone and I don't do paid promotions. This isn't a paid promotion for EMG. I'm just doing it because I like to put out educational videos that help people. The comments that people leave me make it all worthwhile. 
You can support me just by liking, sharing, commenting. But if you do find it useful and you have got that little bit of cash, a cup of tea would be fantastic. I'm not actually going to buy a cup of tea with it. I'm going to use the money I get from the tips to help me make more and more videos. You may have noticed recently I've had a bit of a slowdown, but I really want to make more. So I'm trying to find a way to justify doing that. Oh, and I also sell t-shirts. So instead of tipping a tea, you could even buy a tea. Anyway, thanks again. Let's get back to how to wire up your EMGs. So now I'm going to show you some of those components in more detail by showing how to wire up just a single pickup. So obviously if you buy just one box, you've got all the components you need for a single pickup wire wiring up. You don't actually need this bus controller. That's only really useful for multiple pickups. So here we go. The pickup, as you remember, has this cover on it. So let's take that off now to reveal the pins. And then we need the pickup connector to go into this. Now, of all the wires, we know which one is the pickup connector because the pickup connector has on two ends three wires. One end which goes into the pickup to match the three pins that we've seen, and the other end splits, one of which goes into the battery. The red one goes into the battery, and that's because it's an active pickup, so it needs battery to power it. And the other two is what's going to go into our controller, our volume. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to pick up on the camera, but there's a little arrow just here. An arrow on this connector, and that tells you which way round it goes. That's the arrow where the power's going, and you just want it face up with the arrow on the left here. So then that will just slot, slot on. So I had to do that off camera because it needed a bit of pressure and my tripod's in the way. But yeah, it slides on. It's a bit hard to go on. Don't worry, you're not going to break it. And it clicks in place. There we can see the arrow in that light just there. And then we're going to take our battery connector. Now it's pretty obvious which is the battery connector because it's got the battery clip on the end of it. Now in the instruction book, there is an option to think about if you have a guitar that already has a battery in it for some reason. But we're just assuming you don't and you're using this setup. There we go. We can see the inside of the battery connector and how it matches up with the red socket on the lead from the pickup. And we just fit them together. That was easier to push in. You heard it click. Well, we're here. I'll carry on with the battery for that part of the loop. So the other end of the battery has got this metal clip on it. And that simply slides over one of the attachments, one of the legs on the input jack. Now what we've got here are four adapters. Two of them are going to be for the power. Two of them are going to be for the signal. And they are the tip, which is the highest leg when our, imp when our jack goes in. I've got here a patch lead to show you. When the jack goes in, this makes contact with the tip. So the tip is always going to be the positive, the hot lead. And then the sleeve, which is this ring here, the sleeve is the inner ring. You can see through there that's going to make contact with this outside bit. The sleeve is always going to be the ground lead. And then the other connector is the ring. And that's the one that we're going to attach the battery to. Because then we know when we put our jack in, it will click on the ring. So let's take that black end from the battery and just slide it like so onto the ring lug. There we go. So while we're here, I've got the connector cable for the output. And as I said, it's got the two bits on it. We've got the black, which was the, new, the ground wire, which as I said, is going to be going onto the sleeve and the hot wire will go onto the tip. 
here you can see how everything's sandwiched together. And you can see here, this is the ring. It goes through and appears on the little clip. The one that we've hooked up here, the live one, the hot one, that goes through the bottom and comes out to this clip. And the ground one on the sleeve, you can see attaches directly to the sleeve itself there. So now we've almost got a loop from our pickup round to the battery, round to the output, but to connect them together, it's going to go via our volume control. So then the pickup is going to go on the bottom too. Again, there's an arrow on this, which you might be able to see in the light, but that lines up with the ground. And we know that the ground one is going to be the black wire and it says ground on here. So that just pushes in like that. And then we've got exactly the same set up from the output jack. This time I'm accidentally, you can see the ground one, the black one is not going where it says ground on here. So let's flip it round. Again, there's the arrow pointing out where the ground is and that can go in just like that. And now we have a completed wired setup. The pickup go straight into our 25K volume, which goes straight to the output, which would be the normal setup if it wasn't active, but because it's active, we've also got the battery included, which simply goes into the pickup to give it power and to the output jack as an on-off switch. Very straightforward. Now, obviously, this also came with a tone control. So this is, at the moment, just the volume setup. If we want the tone control, the tone always goes between the volume and the output. So let's take off our output wiring again. Just slides off like that and bring in our tone pot. Also a 25K pot. So here we've got the output going to the bottom two lugs of the tone with the arrow indicating which one's the ground. So the black one needs to line up with the thing that says ground here. Let's push that on. Now our circuit's broken because the tone and the volume aren't connected together and we've just got a simple wire that connects those up. And it's exactly the same setup as before. The black is the ground, so let's line the black on the tone ground and the black on the volume ground. So we're going to put it in the middle one for this one. And there we have it, our new wiring setup. So this time it's all set up with our, vo with our volume and our tone. So we've got coming out of the pickup into the volume via the tone, it goes to the output. And once again, we've got the battery to power the pickup to make it active and also to go through to the output jack as the on and off. So the guitar I'm installing these onto is a Les Paul Special type. So it has two pickups, each with their own volume and tone control. So I'm gonna set that up now. I'm gonna go for it a bit quicker than I did with those last demo, because much of it is the same. I'll stop when I need to. The only thing I really need to point out here with the setup I'm doing is with the bus, these controllers here, which actually have screws in them, are for the output, uh, for the toggle control. Now, I'm gonna leave that for the moment and come back to that once I've set the rest up. I'm setting up everything that was in the box, or two boxes, as it were, because I've got two pickups. Now, although it's two boxes, I don't need all of the components. For example, I only need one output jack, and I only need one bus controller. So let's get on with the setup. I'm gonna put my Bridge at the bottom, my neck at the top. Try and keep them in shot for you. Then let me just line up each one's individual part. I've got the tone and the volume for my bridge and the tone and volume for the neck. Let's leave my bus in the middle. I then need my battery supply, although, the battery bus that comes attached to the battery clip here is not going to be used because there is a bus already on the main control unit. So I'm just going to pull this off, leaving me 
with a red clip at the end and the metal clip that we know fits on our output jack. And then I'll grab the other wires as I need them. So let's take one pickup at a time, starting with the neck one. I'm going to take the pickup wire. I'm going to put it on as before with the arrow on the left. So I know that it's being powered correctly. Perfect. And then this is going to come round into my volume and I need to make sure the ground, the black wire attaches to a ground part on here. Let's put it there at the bottom. I'm going to leave the power for the moment. Then out of here, I need a connector. Again, it's going to make sure the ground lines up and I'm going to leave that at the moment. These are all going to my bus. And then I need one connector that goes round to the tone. Again, I've got to make sure the ground's in the right place. There you go, and I can take that run right round to the tone and make sure the ground's in the right place. I'm going to connect it to the top end here. Now, all of these diagrams are in the pack when you get it. But hopefully we can zoom in a bit here. So let's just check the wire at the bottom. Here is from my pickup. The middle one's going to the bus and the top one's going to the tone. Now let's do exactly the same setup on this top one. So now both of them are set up exactly the same into the volume, into the tone, and both of them have a middle wire coming out of its volume, ready to go into the bus, and a spare power wire coming straight from the pickup. So let's look at the bus carefully. So there we can see the bus, the screws on one side, where I said I'm going to be putting the toggle switch in a moment. The red at the top is for the power. It doesn't matter which plug you use on there, they're all the same, but the black ones at the bottom are significant. So we can see the writing on here. We've got the bridge input, the neck input and the output. So it's as simple as just lining these up. There you go, you can also see they're color coded. So they've got a B and a W for black and white wires. So you know they're going round the right. So let's take my bridge pickup, bridge in, turn it round the right way. I can see the arrows pointing out, the black and white going together here. And then the same with the neck. And then my output wire, the one that's got the connectors on, that go onto the output jack. Oh, that's the wrong way round. Let's turn it round so the black and white are in the right place. Excellent. Now that means the only thing coming out of this at the moment are my connectors here for my output jack. And we remember from before that the black one goes on the sleeve, the white one goes on the tip, and then from the ring we have the black one from the battery clip. Fantastic. And all that leaves us to do now is connect all the red clips into the red power, the battery part of the bus. And like I said before, it doesn't really matter what order these are in. So I've got to move around from my tripod to be able to fit them in. Now I'm doing this all outside of the guitar body to make it easier to explain, but actually some of this might be easier inside the guitar body. So I think what I'm probably going to do is disconnect the bus from everything, put the components in, put the bus in, and then attach them. And what I didn't show you before is the bus does have a Velcro pad on it, which is self-adhesive, so I can stick that somewhere inside the guitar cavity. Fantastic. And on the back here, we've got two volumes, two tones. Recognize the tones because they have got the capacitors on them. Now I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it all, but essentially I'm going to take out the vo volume and tones just from this side, I'm going to unscrew them. And I'm also going to unscrew the pickups. And these pickups have got two screws in the middle here, which are smaller than the pole piece screws. And in fact, they're a different head. These are cross head. So I'm just going to take those screws out and that will allow me to pull the pickups out.
Now back at the back, I'm going to pull out the controls. The two tones are just connected to the volumes by one wire, just like on the EMG ones. And each of the volumes is going to have a lead here coming from a pickup. So let's take this off. Now, normally I'd unsolder it, but because we're going all solderless, to save me having to set up my soldering iron, I'm just going to clip them. And the same on this volume. Here we can see the red lead coming from one of the pickups. Oh, actually, there's two red leads here. One for a pickup, one for a switch. So let's disconnect the switch. So there's also this wire here, which is the ground wire which goes to the bridge and then onto the strings. Now with the EMG pickups, active pickups, you don't need to have this wire, so we don't have to reinstall this. So I'm just going to clip it. I'm here. So it's still long, and I'll roll that up and put that to the side in a moment, just so it's there in case, for any reason, my client wants to go back to the original. So let's take these out. Now I've still left the wire for the switch on. And here's the wire to the original output jack, which also goes to the switch. So I'm just going to cut that here. Fantastic. Now I can lift my guitar up and pull out my pickups. Now we can see here the toggle switch and the wires that come out from there and run through the guitar into the cavity underneath that we just saw it goes underneath the pickups. Now there's no need for me to remove these wires because I'm going to need it. In my setup they connect to the bus. What I will remove while I'm here though is the input jack. Now we'll actually need this jack plate to put the socket, the jack socket from the EMG setup on. So I'm going to keep that, but just take out this. So what I've done here is actually taken all the controls, but taken the pickups off. I'm going to start like this actually without taking anything else apart. So first things first, let's get a pair of volumes and tones together. There's one volume and tone, and here's another volume and tone. So it might be as simple as putting them in. Now we know that the neck volume and tone goes at the top and the bridge at the bottom. But at the moment, neither of these are plugged into pickups, so it doesn't matter which way round they go, because I'm going to sign that later. So let's just put these in first. Without getting the wires too muddled up. I'm not actually screwing them in yet. I'm just checking how everything's going to fit. I'm a bit anxious that we might not fit a battery in here, but we're going to try. Like I said before, it might have been easier to wire this up in place, but I didn't because I wanted to do it for the camera. So yeah, that looks like it's going to fit okay. Now, let's talk about how we screw these in. So these are quite long threads. Normally, obviously, the body of the pot is on the inside. Then you might put on a nut underneath first followed by one of these washers that helps it grip against the wood. Now I'm not putting this nut underneath because actually the thickness of the wood is quite thick for the hole that this is going through. So by the time with this washer the thread goes through, there's not much sticking up. There's just enough for the washer which will then go on top and the single nut that will go on top of that. If the wood was thinner then you would have the nut underneath to help thicken it so there's not too much of the thread sticking over the top.
So this is just going to go down into the hole like that. Then I can lift it up here. And then on the other side, I can drop my washer on and my nut. Now I'm not actually going to screw it on too tight to start with. I just want to hold it in place. I'm going to tighten it all once I know everything's fine on the inside. As I said, they're not tightened completely because that allows me to twist them a bit on the inside. And I've angled them here just so there's enough space here for me to put my bus. Because I would like my bus to go here. I don't know if you can see that. Because then it isn't going to be near. Let's move all these otherwise over the top out the way. Once the bus is down here, it is close to the wires that are coming from the toggle switch. Because there, there's a bit of give on the toggle switch wires, but not a huge amount. So I'd like it to be near here, and that also allows me space here for my battery to go. Now, before I go any further, the wires here that come from the toggle switch come through the only hole which the pickup wires then need to thread through. Now, if you remember, with these EMG pickup wires, at the end they've got these black pieces which actually are too big for this hole. So I'm going to need to widen this hole. Now to make sure I don't damage anything, I'm going to take out my pots and I'm going to pull these wires through. There is actually another alternative instead of drilling the holes, which I'm going to have to do because the hole that goes between the pickup cavities, the only way to access that is in the making process because it's a fixed neck, I can't unscrew the neck and I can't get in to drill the hole. So if you remember with these pickup wires, it's three wide at one end, but the other end is two and one because of the power that's going to it, going to a different part of the bus. So I'm going to simply fold it back to make this shape and then I'm going to thread them through. Now it's a tight fit, but I'm going to thread, this one's for the neck pickup. I'm going to thread it through here and you can see just as it pulls through, I can pull it through. There we go. And now I've got the socket to go into the neck and then I can push that through into the body cavity. It's a bit awkward to film, but you can see here the hole. So let's take these again, do that shape again. And I'm going to thread them through. And this is where I pick the guitar up and pull it through from the other end. There we go, both parts through, ready to plug back in to the volume control and into the battery bus. But first of all, I'm going to thread the other wires through. And as I know this was the neck pickup, I'm going to go in the top volume, which is the neck volume, and put it in. Let's just check I'm getting it the right way so that it's going to the ground. There we go. And then the power going into the bus here. Easy. So just before I tighten anything, I'm just going to push the output jack through, check all the wires are still neat. This might be a chance to pull some out and rewire them if it's not. I think that's okay. Now everything's okay, I'm going to position my pots so they're all in a good angle to give as much space as I can have in the middle. They're all in the right place now. There's loads of space around for the bus to now fit in. And I'm going to neaten up the wires in a minute, but what I'm going to do is tighten each of the pots. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold it on the back to stop it slipping. And then from the other side, I'll now tighten that. Now this might seem a bit premature to do before everything is really in place, but to help neaten this up, I'm going to use some cable ties and just tie up some of the cables that are in here. I find if it's a bit neater, it's going to help me when I attach the toggle switch. 
and I'm using cable ties that are totally different colour to the wires because if I need to cut them off at a later point I want to make sure I'm not accidentally cutting a wire. So here I've cable tied all of the piece, all of the wires that are to do with the bridge. Now I'm going to take the ones that are to do with the neck. Just need to make sure there's room for this underneath. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the way this wire is going, so I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to thread it round. I'm going to put it back in just to neaten it up a bit. Now you can't really see because I've filmed it the wrong way round with my hand in the way. Now I can always unclip these cable ties if I want to later and redo it to make it neater once everything is in place. But I think for now that's going to look quite good. I'll just trim them off. There we go. Now I can pull my bus out, ready to wire up the toggle switch here. Now a quick thing you might consider doing is removing the plate behind the toggle switch to see which wire is which. And I can see here that the grey is the output and the red and the green are the pickup wires. And the way I know that is the grey one goes to the middle of the switch and the green and the red go to the outer two. Now annoyingly, there isn't a ground wire that's individual coming all the way from here. Instead, each wire, the output and the two pickup ones, is a two part wire, which has got the wire that's connected to the switch in the correct places and the ground wire on it. So here's what I mean about those wires. We've got the two pickup wires with the grounds on them and here the grey output wire with the ground on it as well. Now what you can just about see on here, if I tilt it back, let's zoom in a bit, and what you can see here is the socket for the bridge, neck and output and then two sockets for the ground. Now annoyingly I think I'm going to have to do some soldering on this. What I'm going to do is put the bridge, neck and output into here but on each of them where they've got their own um, ground here, I'm going to tie them together, solder them together with another wire coming off of it to go into the ground. So all three wires individually are connected to one wire ground, all three grounds connected to one. And I'm going to do that before I insert everything in here, just to keep it easy. So what you can see here is I've got all three wires together. They've each got their own little white wire which is the basically the hot part, the part that's wired up. And then we've got the individual piece here, which is actually the three grounds coming from each of these three wires twisted together, ready to have a small bit soldered onto it. Let's do that now. And then I'm gonna use a bit of the heat sink the heat shrink tubing just to put over it. There we go. And that will be the only bit of soldering needed. And now I'm going to wire everything in. Let's put the ground in first. They just literally slot into the boxes. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole process. So from this angle, you can see the hole into which I'm going to push the last pickup wire from the toggle switch. And the bare wire needs to go into that hole. There it is. And then it needs to stay there while I fasten up the screw, tighten up the screw. Camp this and shot. Let's check that's tight enough. There you go, and now that's tight enough. So then I'm going to put the jack plate on. It's the same as before. This washer goes on first, same as with the pot. Then this goes on. Then the washer, the nut. I'm going to tighten it before I put it in. 
there we go nice and tight and then slot that in there ready to screw on right next up is to neaten everything up but to do that i'm going to put the battery on just to check everything will now fits fine so the battery is going to go in here like this which means I think I'm going to tie these up with a cable tie. These are the, that's the wires from the toggle switch. Then I'm going to peel off the sticky tab at the bottom of the bus. That's the Velcro underneath the bus and just push it down there. Fantastic. And I think I'm actually going to take the battery bus out and put it on this side just to make it neater. And I am going to do what I said before, which is unclip that cable tie which I had on temporarily. And now I can bundle all of this together neatly. Now what I would probably do is put a bit of foam in here on top and on underneath the battery just to hold it tightly in place but I'm actually going to leave that for now just until I've checked everything is working fine. Now we're going to turn it over. Now all that's left is to put the pickups in so we know the 81 is going in here in the bridge. Let's just make sure we get it round the right way with the arrow on the upside. There we go. I think it's going to look neater like this isn't it? That way round. And the 85, again the right way around, coming in like this. Perfect. Now, these take screws which are going to go um, in a position where there weren't screw holes before. So I need to make new screw holes for it. Now I'm using a number two drill bit which is narrower than the width of the screws and I'm just going to first of all just see if I can line up the hole and make a little mark. I want to make sure I'm not catching any wires. Yeah, it's, it's missing the wires by quite a bit. And obviously, I don't want to drill through the guitar body. So, just a little way in. Now these didn't come with any springs to go under between the pickup and the body and the screw will go through and I'm not putting any foam under the pickup I'm just going to see how they embed on their own. Sue! H Hello Josie! I, I thought it was locked and you were in there. No I was in here. I got my socks on, so it is all right. Oh, did you have a lovely day? Yeah. Look how black your socks are. What are you doing? I'm... Oh, that is really shiny. How did you make it? Oh, well, now this one is someone gave it to me. I didn't make it. Oh. I'm just putting new pickups in, which are these black What's bits. What's that? that? That's my camera. It's filming what we're doing. Oh, that's so cool. I wish I, I could have a big one. A big what? A big camera? No, a big guitar like that. Oh, well one day you might have to start on a small guitar first. So actually what I've got here is because of the wires underneath this pickup on this side, on the treble side, is higher than on the base side. So I think I am going to have to put a bit of foam under this one. It doesn't matter because it's not actually too high because once the bridge is on stuff, it's still going to probably need to come up higher. So I think I might end up putting foam under these ones as well. So I've actually got these bits of foam with a spring in them, which I quite like from an old pickup that I took off of a, I think this might be off of a bass guitar. There was actually foam under the other pickups that were here before but I'm going to try these ones out. Just need to drop it in place. 
and then I've got one as well for the neck and then screw them down. So here's a quick tip to check your pickups are working after you've installed new pickups or changed your wiring in any way. Here I've got it set so both pickups are on. I'm going to use a screwdriver but anything metallic would do. If I tap it I can hear the sound coming through my amp. Now let's just switch to the rhythm one. I can hear it coming through. Let's check the volume on it. Oh, there's the volume going down and check the tone on it. You can hear the tone changing and let's just check that the wiring's correct. Yeah, nothing coming through on this one. Put them both on, just this one now. Yeah, the volume's different, the tone's different and that one's not on. Both on. Perfect. Cheers, I hope that was useful and thanks so much for watching. This guitar is actually going to appear in another video because I'm doing a video focusing on how to set up a guitar like this. Thinking about how we adjust the truss rod, the string height, the intonation and the pickup height. The core things you need to do in a setup. So do like and subscribe and until next time, happy strumming. <laughs>